I had always heard about the Fazioli, that this is really, it's the ultimate in the piano world, that the, that uh, Mr. Fazioli set out to make the finest pianos in the world. And it's like a legend, you know, like, yeah, I was really excited to get involved with the Fazioli pianos. And after visiting the Fazioli factory, after having toured different factories around the world, there's no doubt in my mind that there's no other piano like it in the world. Uh, nobody else in the world goes through as much effort as the Fazioli Piano Factory does to make each and every piano absolutely perfect. So I'm excited to represent them. I'm excited to, to have stores that, that, that carry them. I'm excited to see people come and try them. I invite anybody to come and, and play them, even if, if they could never afford to have one or never you know, be able to get one themselves. And the absolute pinnacle in the piano world, the finest being made in the world today, is the Fazioli Piano that's made by hand in Italy. Sometimes we get clients that would like to create something really, really unique. And for those times, we arrange for professional architects or uh, designers to make a design of a, of a case that's going to be really beautiful. And uh, we're going to take a look at the, the, the piano that was designed by an architect in Vancouver, Ernest Collins, who also designed the home of this uh, client. I don't usually do pianos. <laughs> I've designed every <laughs> conceivable type of furniture from ultra contemporary to the most, you know, beautiful sort of historic pieces. But um, after a while, uh, Manuel sort of persuaded us to do it. And the main thing in the design of, of something of that um, uh, quality, I mean, it's a piece of fine art. Mm -hmm. If you take away what you know, we might have designed, it's, a, a, it's a, work, a work of art, and we needed to just add another level of, of interest to the piece. And we, we wanted it to be very, um, very sophisticated, very simple. The Chen House um, originally was, was, was built about 13 years ago, 13 or 14 years ago. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's very, very late Georgian. Very de definitely has a Georgian sort of quality to it and style, stylistic expression. But certainly <laughs> in the, uh, the 18th, 17th, 18th, 19th century, there would be salons where people would play the piano and gather around and sing. And uh, so uh, it was really lovely to, you know, rework that particular room, which was uh, uh, used as a music room as well. But. Uh, Mr. Chen wanted to, again to take it to a, a, almost a salon level where people would feel welcome to come in and sit around the piano while someone was playing. And so when he decided to invest in this piano, he felt it was important that it should speak to the house on a, even a bigger level than just being a beautiful piano. So the, uh, we started again looking, researching motifs that were used by the great English furniture makers and cabinet makers. and. One of the motifs that we both really liked was the Chippendale, the medallion that Chippendale developed in a lot of his cabinetry. So we used that as a point of departure for you know, establishing the, uh, the decoration or the, the design in the piano. With the veneering process, there are different components to it. We have the doors, the drawers, and the side gables. Uh, when you look at the doors, for instance, um, what happens there is they have to match the Fazioli piano that, uh, that this will live with when all is said and done. Then from there, there's a sketch with the measurements for the door right here to give a better idea of what's going on. And then there's a sample that comes from Fazioli for a guaranteed match, and it has to look like this in the end. So from there, we've laid up all the veneers for the door and the side gables. That is what becomes the match. And the two side gables don't have the medallions in them, but they have the same veneers, and essentially the same pattern. This that you see in here is just all the stitching that helps keep everything together. And uh, through the veneering process, that disappears. And then there are other pieces that are already laid up that um, 
that are part of the, the console face to eventually look like this. One of the ideas that, that, uh, that we have, because the uh, client had seen some Fazioli pianos that, ha that have a painting underneath the lid, much like the, the harpsichord we see here, and he was wanting to pursue an idea like that, we suggested uh, commissioning uh, a painting that goes in the same room as the piano, but not necessarily on the piano itself. And the idea behind the painting that, that is in the music room was uh, sort of like, like many paintings from from you know the 1400s, 1500s, uh, that time, uh, they show many people sitting around the piano and enjoying the music. So we wanted to mimic something like that. It was about a year and a half ago. I was doing. I wanted to do some paintings of. Uh, like whimsical sort of paintings of of a piano and my little my little cousin all dressed up kind of like a fairy or whatever and with little butterflies and things. Um, so I just decided to go up to the piano store on Broadway and went in there and asked the woman, which was Manuel's wife, Judy, if uh, I could take some shots of some pianos, just the keyboards and things. And she said, yeah, that's great. And she was interested in art and she was like, well, you know, if you when you do these paintings, I'd love to see them afterwards close to a year later, eight months later or something. I think I went in there with the paintings, showed him some photos and then brought these big paintings in that were a lot bigger than he thought probably. And then uh, said, yeah, let's bring them down to Richmond. And so we put them up. And then a few months later, he phoned and said, hey, I've got this Fazioli sale happening and they want a painting of their family. The client wants a painting of the family and would you be interested in doing it? And there's gonna be like 19 people in this painting. So I said, yeah, of course. And I had no idea what I was getting myself into. <laughs> so I went and did a photo shoot with the, uh, the family. And I've got them posted all over my wall in here of different family members and such. The biggest challenge of the whole thing is the client really wanted to see a lot of the house. So to, for such a big painting, in order to get a lot of the house in it, we had to, I had to take the shot from far back. So that would have, it makes the people only about seven inches high. And I've never really painted small heads that much, so to get them looking like the individuals and to get the right amount of detail has been the huge challenge. I still have a lot of work to do to get this thing ready for, for that day, so. One interesting aspect to this work was that we wanted to have Mr. Fazioli somehow painted into the scene. And uh, so, uh, we thought if the piano was going to be there, why not have Mr. Fazioli playing on the piano and then the whole family sitting around enjoying it. And this is Mr. Fazioli, so apparently he has lighter hair. <laughs> exhibit for the first time our piano in I-81. Uh, uh, and this was really one shock for the uh, world of the piano because uh, since many, many, many years, nobody uh, was start, was, was newcomer in this uh, field. Nobody was expecting a new piano makers, especially one Italian piano maker. And I remember that uh, this new was uh, so uh, incredible for everybody that uh, we have the stand, our booths was uh, completely crowded for four days. All, uh, you know, you couldn't come inside because uh, there was, <laughs> all people went to see this piano because uh, it was so strange, so new, so uh, unbelievable. And then they uh, had to recognize that the piano that we was exhibiting was very high quality, very beautiful. A lot uh, of people, they start to become immediately enthusiastic. And uh, this was uh, uh, something that uh, then uh, creates uh, one kind uh, uh, of uh, advertising person to person. Each pianist uh, 
the, the, it was one argument. Uh, the, uh, then I was speaking with the other, you know that there is a new piano, it's fantastic, it's Italian. Oh, yes, and then uh, this news came mouth to mouth, no? And this was unbelievable publicity and un unbelievable uh, uh, establishment. Uh, this was very beautiful for me, yes. All our uh, group, uh, uh, we are very sensible to the challenge. When there is some new idea that uh, uh, maybe is difficult to realize, then we keep this like a challenge and we do, okay, we can do this. So the, the client gave us the deadline on July 31st and we it was a little bit tight with the piano because we knew it would take 12 months to build the piano. So we're, uh, we've, we ordered the cabinets, the chairs, the table, the painting was commissioned, the frame, everything was, was started early on, but we knew it would be a, a long process. It's all in the midst of being finished as we speak, and we're, our plan is that it's all going to come in all on the same day and just have a tremendous uh, wow factor for the, for the client, and we, we really expect to, to blow them away.